most components these days have threaded holes. So now we're going to see Walter's newly developed TC470 Supreme thread former and the benefits it will bring to your high volume manufacturing. So first of all, in general, to say uh, the thread forming process um, produces no chips. And that's uh, the big difference between uh, thread tapping or thread milling in general. Because uh, we are producing no chips, it's interfering the machining process. And chips uh, can be lead to fractures from the cutting edge or the forming edge, or uh, maybe for a totally tool breakage as well. So there is in one hand, the new thread former developed geometry. This guarantees a uh, high tool life, uh, a high process reliability, and uh, a continuous quality. Also quite important uh, in, the, in the seri production or in the mass production, because there's no need for interrupted machining process for that. Eh? That's quite important for them. Uh, this high pimp spouting uh, is extremely hard and very smooth. Uh, this prevents material adhesion, uh, we are calling uh, welding. Uh, this would be, or uh, this has an impact of the thread quality as well and require the thread former to be replaced early. And in general speaking, the new geometry combined with the uh, new thread former's very high surface quality, uh, this reduces the torque uh, for about, around about 35% in general, in average. And this means a lower torque, have a less heat at the tool, and in the end, a higher tool life in general. Other possibilities that can be used now with machines with lower power. Here in this short movie or video, you can see uh, that thus allows these three aspects to enable us to recommend a higher cutting speed. As you can see here, uh, in this short section from the movie. On the right hand, the TC470 Supreme, the new one. Uh, we are recommending this in general with uh, cutting speed with 30 meter per minute. In the middle, uh, competitor ones. They are recommend this in their catalog uh, with uh, 23 meters. And we have more than double cutting speed compared to the uh, HSSE powder metal steel. In this slide, let's, uh, let me say a summarize uh, what we are recommending in different kinds of materials. These all materials are ISOP materials in this area. And uh, in general, 
we have really a significant impact uh, of the cutting speed in general and uh, overall time saving um, for large series or in the mass production. On average, we can say or we can achieve between 26% up to 77% higher cutting speeds in different kinds of these steel materials. Well, I have to say, Tivo has presented that very, very well. But before we get into that product, possibly start with the basics for mm -hmm. the uh, maybe some apprentices and new engineers watching. Why would an engineer use a roll tap, at, you know, a foot formula roll tap ahead of a cut, cut tap? tap? Yeah. Um, generally speaking, well, not generally speaking, a, a roll, a rolled thread or a formed thread will always be stronger than a cut thread because you're, you're deforming the material, so the material flows through the form of the thread, as opposed to cutting through the material. So it's always a stronger thread. Generally, you're gonna get a, a better gauge thread. Uh, it's tool life, again, general will be m increased over a cut thread or a cut tap. Mm -hmm. And the productivity, you can run quicker with a, with a um, with a roll, trap, a roll tap and over a cut tap. Mm. It's worth pointing out as a warning. It's a different. It's a different core diameter. Therefore, a different. Uh, a different tap, uh, drill yeah. rather. Yeah, with with um, with thread forming against thread cutting. Whereas you'd um, you'd do your tapping drill, uh, a, a pitch, a thread pitch down on the nominal diameter. You approximately, as a rule of thumb, half a pitch down on nomi nominal diameter. And the reason for that is you're no longer cutting the thread to size and creating swarf, you're actually forming the material into the thread form. Mm -hmm. And this product we're looking at today, it goes, th the next step arguably, it's carbide. Yeah, it is, it is. It's, um, it's, it's solid carbide, uh, thread former. It, it's been developed primarily for uh, high volume production, but obviously being carbide, the speeds that you can get out of the, uh, out of the tool, mm -hmm. If you've got smaller batches, but your productivity is imperative, then it could also give you some cost savings there. But j primarily, it's a it's a volume product. It's a volume product. Mm -hmm. So, guys, if you're watching this, please do come into us. Uh, pros and cons against roll tapping, or maybe you're not high production. You're asking, should I still look at you know carbide taps rather than HSS P or PM materials or HSS materials? But Obviously, you've got to hold this. So why should engineers use a soft synchro tap adapter? With carbide, I'd always recommend um, a soft synchro and small diameter taps. The reason being, on any machine tool, the, the, the Z-axis and the spindle obviously are orientated together, but you're always going to get some kind of little bit of mismatch between the servos. So with the, um, with the soft synchro, that takes account of that, it compensates for that, which means you're gonna get a more secure process, more tool life, and a better quality thread. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. Most people say I need volume to use uh, carbide taps. There's an there's a increase in cost of the components. But I always think there's gonna be a payback regardless. If, mm. if you're doing, if this is a, a common thread, you probably only ever need one. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So that, that could last you for, for the lifetime of the component in the last lifetime of the job yeah mm -hmm. and you've already covered this but in terms of the integrity of the thread a cut tap or a thread milled um, a thread milled uh, thread or against a roll tap how, how do they all stack up well you'll always you'll always gauge better with a with a formed thread it's it's a more accurate mm -hmm. it's a more accurate thread mm -hmm. um, you do have to bear in mind uh, there's certain industries where you can't use a roll thread I, I call it a roll thread because that's what I've always called it mm -hmm. instead of a thread former because with it forming the material, you, you'll get a, a crest form, so you have particle traps. So it can't be used in such as the, uh, the medical industry, food industry, and aerospace because of potential, you know, potentials with the, uh, with the forming. Sure, um, without getting too much into deformation mm. and elongation of materials, um, what materials can be roll threaded? Again, it used to be purely aluminium, but it's, 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 come, it's come forward now. Yeah, primarily it's designed around uh, steels up to 380 Brinell. Uh, that is the what we class as our primary application area. Secondary application area are in cast irons and non-ferrous or aluminiums. Mm -hmm. So 9% 9, 9 silicon or less and 8% uh, 
elongation capability within the within the cast iron mm -hmm. so a ductile line and for people just tuning in please please do uh, uh, give us your questions but just a bit of a recap in terms of the, the productivity gains uh, like tool life it's going to be there's no comparison yeah. but in terms of our productivity gains what are we going to see that hs uh, like a powder type material against the carbide material well cutting speed against a, a powder mat tap or powder mat thread former to a carbide thread former you're looking at probably three times the cutting speed the beauty of the tc470 is we've also now developed this with traditionally we've had five lobes for forming this has got seven lobes so it reduces the friction it allows us to go quicker and it improves the tool life of the tool immeasurably mm -hmm. and, and we're not and we're not um putting coolant through the front of the tool it's coming out in you know with, within them on the low spot the lobes we have we have solid tools so no through coolant we have axial through coolant for blind holes and we have the radial coolant which is actually exiting unlike the uh, traditional taps it's exiting in in two different parts of the tool and at two different angles so you're always going to get a good coolant supply to the critical point which is the first two uh, lobes that are in contact there we are lindsay i believe i have a question coming yeah, in yeah we've got it um, on, on route it's on the way but and um, we've got lots of you liking us on all of the social media platforms so thank you so much and we do really encourage uh, you to get your questions in um i do have one from earlier but i think um yeah so i'm just going to go previously back we've got one coming in but it's just been written to me um well sent to me so um liam carter from arnold rag this is the smaller tooling that um we spoke with the before with Ian. Yeah. yes and um, the one i cannot believe you can get through spindle uh, the coolant through the all. that's just crazy it's so tiny uh, but what size diameters can this deal with from Liam Carter from Arnold Rag so for parting off with the DX18 at the moment it's it's limited to a 35 mil diameter which for most if if you look at sliding heads particular most sliding heads are in that ring for below 42 millimeters so it'll cover the vast majority of sliding heads for parting off at the moment sure I'm not sure is he on about the slide the, the part off or maybe the drill I'm not sure we oh, may as well say I we may as well do both Sorry, what was the other? What was the question again? Uh, oh, it was the so, so. What size diameters can this deal with? It was. It was. Yeah, you've covered that one. Yeah. I've got another question though. Not to fret. Um, right. So next question: Can you use this? Is from Martin Khan. Khan Ra. I hope I've said the, your name correctly. Correct me if I'm wrong, Martin. Um, can you use roll tap on CC three 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 G bronze? Never used it. I'll be honest, but. It's in the non-ferrous material area, so there's no reason why we can't. I think, depending on, I'd need to check on what the, uh, you know, what the elongation and what the, uh, the uh, composition of the material, but there's no reason, because it's in, sat in the non-ferrous. It may just be an application and may, maybe just a data change to get that to work. Can, can you assist with, um, you know, going out to customers, yeah, for absolutely. example, to Martin and going Martin, and tests? Yeah, if Martin wants to get in touch with us again on the, uh, with the, on the details on the banner, uh, depending on what area he's in, we can put him in touch with the right person or we can give him the advice and then get him to get one of the guys that's in his area to follow up with him. See, this is the perfect, perfect thing about doing these live shows is basically you don't need to go anywhere. You don't, you know, it, it's almost like you're going to an open house, you're going to an event and you're talking to the industry experts. So Martin, um, if you've got any more questions, please, please send them in. And if you are watching, you might be nervous. It's fine uh, to write a message in. Um, sometimes people do get nervous, but it's a case of what you would ask in person. Ask now because we have got the experts on hand. We have got the ticker going across the bottom if you do want to contact them post the show.